So, we got the final set. Celtics versus Golden State. Um, I kind of called that. Um, wow. I don't want to talk about the finals, though. I want to talk about Game 7 that just occurred because I don't think it's going to, like, truly, like, hit what just happened. And there's some things that I think the Bulls should take away from this playoffs, right? We're talking about, first off, and I, and I want to touch on the Mavs in this too, right? Every team that played in the Final Four was a top defensive team. A top defensive team. Acme, I hope you're paying attention. No matter what happens with the Zach Levine situation, top defenses win you championships at the end. They get you into those situations to where you got an opportunity to win. Period. And they did it in different ways. Some teams have, um, what is it, elite rim protection. Others don't. Others have switchable defenses. Or in the case of the Celtics, you got both. You legit got both. And these, again, are the things. This is, this is how you get there, people. This is exactly how the fuck you get there. Meanwhile, our team this year was not... Locked in on defense, like, up until, like, you know, well, at least it's for, like, the first half of the season, almost, they were. But then after that, it just kind of was like, whatever, fuck it. You know, let's just get this shit over with. But this is, this is it, people. That is fucking it. And... Because of it, we're here today. We're here where we are today. So hear me out. Last night, I think Jimmy Butler submitted himself as like, I'm not going to necessarily say an all-time, all-time great. But I think Jimmy Butler, to me, has shown that he's like a top player of all time. Like, he's, he's in that, like, top 100, top 75 player of all time. Why? Because the guy just went out there, and he did this before. This is nothing new for him. But he went out there and gave it everything he fucking had to try to get this game home. He, he literally tried to carry this team to victory. And it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. But he tried it. And this isn't his first time. Jimmy is always in these series where it's like do or die. And he's given it like he'll play the entirety of, of the game just to try to give his team an opportunity to win the game. And it's just not good enough at times because. You know, there, there's limits. You know, he took a game, he took game five from the Lakers in the bubble because he just put up that all-time performance and he was just worn the fuck out at the end. Like, and I even have to admit, I've had Jimmy kind of low on my list because I like Jimmy as a player, but I wasn't quite sure if... Jimmy carrying a team like he does is something we can, like, hang our hat on. This year kind of solidified it for me. He's one of those guys that he's a floor raiser. And it also makes certain teams look foolish for not having him. Now, I get the issues that was had with Minnesota, and so they had to get rid of him. I completely understand that. 
But when you're sitting here and you're Philadelphia and you got Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris, yada yada yada. Of course, like the person they should have got rid of, ironically, the person they should have got rid of is Tobias Harris. And I know people are gonna talk about Ben Simmons and stuff. Look, I'm a Ben Simmons truther. Okay, I still believe in the guy. Like, you don't just go put up like 18, 8, and 8, you know, and and and, and get like, you know, defensive player of the year votes and, and just be considered like like a terrible player. Like, you just don't do that. You know, Joel Embiid already had good rapport, they're good friends, yada yada yada. They should have kept Jimmy. If they had kept if they had kept Jimmy, the Bucks may not have gotten to be champions last year. But the guy just he just does it, man. Like he's the like if and, and here's here's my belief. I think Jimmy Butler can get you a ring as the best player on a team. But there's one specific comp. Like you need your team to be built one specific way for that to happen. The Heat covers some of that as far as defensively, but it's on the offensive end where they need more. Okay. Let, let me be honest with you. Bam is never going to be your second best player. Bam might be your most impactful player because of all the stuff that he can do. But Bam is one of those guys that's going to lack the offensive game to actually be able to facilitate the change. Like, yeah, he got 25 points last night. But he's never going to be a guy that's going to give you the points that you need when you need them. So he has to be your third tier player. He has to be a third level player. And so it's then it's Jimmy Butler and then who else? Tyler Hero was hurt. So I'm not gonna give him too much, you know, leeway here or there. But Tyler Hero, his game is checkable right now. You can check Tyler. He's not quite there. It's gonna take a couple years, and by then Jimmy won't be good enough to do the stuff that he's doing. And so I know people are going to think Victor Oladipo, and I like Victor Oladipo. I think he really could be the second, but him and Jimmy do too much of the same thing. And if you follow me for any length of time, I hate repetitiveness. Like somebody, like somebody has to be unique and different. So they need another guy. They, they need another guy with a different kind of skill set from Jimmy, just about that can like, literally get it going for you. And honestly, I think it has to be in their backcourt. So if I'm them, I'm going to be looking to make a backcourt change. Because, yeah, you just gave all this money to Kyle Lowry, and I know he's had injury woes, but that was, like, abysmal from him this entire series. And I know they got Max Struess back there, but he's not your guy that you really want to start anyway. So you need to fix that. I think your change is going to have to come from finding that guard that could come in and do some of those things. Now, if I were them, I might give a phone call to uh, Cleveland and ask them about Colin Sexton. And I know y'all are going to be like, you know what? Some of you are going to, you're going to be like, you know what? That could fucking work. I just don't like that Colin is six foot. But under Eric Spolstra and with Jimmy Butler back there, I think they can find a way to make that work because he's going to give you 25 a game. Like he's legit going to give you 25 a game and he can, he can play basketball. He can, he can score. He can hoop. Okay. I think that'll give them that extra punch. Like, yeah, you're going to still want Kyle Lowry there because he's a defensive guard, yada, yada, yada. But he's not going to be, I think with, the, with, with next to them, he's going to be mature enough and he's going to grow as a player. Okay, he might even become a better defensive player playing next to those guys. And it'll give you another guy out there that you know can go out there and get you 25 points. Because here's what happens, right? I'm going to basically explain what happened at the end of this game. Jimmy Butler played in every minute of the game, right? What happens when you do that is your stamina gets taken away. And he just he got fatigued. He just got fatigued. He had nothing left. That, that ball hit the rim short. 
He didn't have any legs. His legs were gone. That's all that was. He, he, was, he was fatigued and he had no legs. So that's all that that was at the end of the day. If he had somebody like, and this is the other thing, like when it comes to like depth, and this is why I'm very pro depth when it comes to basketball teams. If you have the right amount of depth, that wouldn't have been an issue because you could afford to sit Jimmy for a couple minutes and allow somebody to get, come into the game and help you win that game. But you couldn't sit him. You couldn't like, and even Spo said he's like, I couldn't afford to sit him or Bam. And I, I understand it. I trust me. I under fucking stand it. I know what he means. I know exactly what the fuck he means. The game on the line. No, I, I, I need my guys. I, I need my fucking guys, bro. Like I, I, I need these guys. They have to play. My best chance of winning. Is with them. If we win the game with them, they get like three, four days to rest to recover. I need my guys out there, man. But it is what it is. But anyway, back to this. That comp, the comp that, that Jimmy needs. He needs a team like the set. The next best guy has to be equal or less to him, but not by much. If he's going to be less, they got to be right there where Jimmy is clearly the better player, but they got to be an offensive guy. If you're going to have Bam on the team, Bam is great. Move, make Bam your third option, and Bam can still do what Bam does. But you need one other guy out there that you know is going to be able to come into the game and just take pressure off. Or allow Jimmy to be able to sit down. Like you need someone that you can put out there and can run the team and can get points and will allow Jimmy to be able to rest in key moments so that when it comes time for the late game, he has his legs to be able to make that shot. If Jimmy could have just rested for like four or five minutes that game, he, he hits that last shot. And, and we're talking about the Miami Heat in the finals. And, I, and I'm just keeping it a buck. If if that if that was the, if he had like just that amount of, that amount of time to rest, he hits that shot. We're talking about a different game. But anyway, you need your team built. Defensively, like the Heat have it, you're gonna need your shooters, which they have. But all in all, you really need. A big, which you got in Bam, and you need that th you need that next score guy, someone that can take over the game. Because Jimmy, Jimmy ultimately he wants to be the defensive guy anyway. Like he really wants to play defense. That that is his calling card. Let me play defense, people. But they also need to get younger. They got too many old bodies. And the young bodies haven't developed yet. And even though Tyler Hero's good, they're not playing Duncan Robinson. Why? Because he's just a one-dimensional shooter. He works in the regular season. When it comes push come to shove, you don't like you're not playing Peach, you're not playing him over PJ Tucker. You're not playing him over Jimmy. You're not playing him over Kyle Lowry. You're not playing them over Victor Depot. You're not playing them over Strews. You're not playing them over Bam. You're just not. And that's just real. So they paid the guy, what, $16 million a year to basically sit on the bench. He's got to go. He's going to get traded. Now he's an elite shooter. There's teams that could use him, but they need to get they need to get another part there that they could actually use to help, like, you know, dictate the game. All credit to the Celtics, though. 
the Celtics might have an all-time great defense. And I can't even lie, that team scares me because I got to go to state winning in, in six. But that team kind of scares me. But Patrick Beverly said something that I think is going to go well under the radar because a lot of people aren't going to, you know, validate the shit that he says because of how he ragged on CP3. But he said the Celtics don't guard splits well, which is what the Warriors run a lot. And I'm going to say this again. There's a different energy you got to prepare for when you play Golden State because the league has like a meta game and the Warriors are like the anti-meta. They do not play the game the same way that everybody else in the league does. And so when you deal with them, when you play them, you have to adjust because they come into the game way different than what you've experienced. And so you're not prepared to go with them at, up front at first. It's just you're not ready for it because of the style of play is just completely different. you got to take a couple games to get used to that. And so... I don't believe I don't believe this series starts until game three. But but the Golden State Warriors have to win the first two games. If the Golden State Warriors lose either of the first two games, Celtics are winning the series. I'm going to say this again. Golden State must win the first two games. If they do not, Celtics are winning the series. The Celtics defense is not a defense to be played with. Their defense, to me, is all-time great level. Now, I know they're dealing with injuries here and there, and Golden State is relatively healthy. But that can flip at any time. You do not want to give them life. You do not want to give them life. If you're Golden State, you need to treat every game like it's game fucking seven. Because... They are not playing. They are hungry. They want it. And they got bodies to throw at you. So to go to state. But there's a size mismatch in the paint. Horford. And Williams are going to be a problem for Looney and Draymond. And they are going to force Steph Curry, Poole, Clay. They're going to force them to have to defend. Now, what the Golden State Warriors do very well is the same thing that the, that the Celtics do very well. They're very good in, on, in team defense. But the I think Boston is better one-on-one -on -one ISO defenders, especially on the perimeter. Not to say that Golden State isn't. But I think they're more built for physical play than the Golden State Warriors. Now, where I think Golden State has the advantage is conditioning. I think they can wear them down. I think they can wear them down. And the thing that gives Boston an advantage is Boston can play small ball with the Warriors. In fact, it might be more advantageous if Boston plays small ball. If I'm being real, it might help them overall just to play small ball. There's holes on both teams. And, and Boston has shown more propensity to be suspect at closing out games or dealing with the opposing team in, in, in the key moments of the playoffs. Golden State is experienced, and if they smell blood, they're going to take it. But I'm picking Golden State. I'm, I'm going to trust Steph Curry. I'm going to trust Clay. I'm going to trust um, Draymond Green, Looney. I'm going to trust those guys. Wiggins. Wiggins is going to be an X factor for this series. And I think he's going to, 
I think he's going to be pivotal. Now, let me say this. I expect him to start off on Tatum. I think Draymond is, is going to stay on, is he's going to check uh, uh, Al Horford. Because Al Horford is the cog and the key to make everything with Boston work. And I think they're going to put him on, on, on him and save, you know, Tatum strictly for Wiggins. I think they're okay letting Klay Thompson deal with uh, Jalen Brown. If they need to, they can switch. Because Drake can guard any of them. But I don't think they want to drain Draymond for the late game by having him stick Tatum. So they're gonna have it's gonna be they're gonna defend they're gonna defend Tatum by committee. Clay gonna get him, Wiggins gonna get him, Dre gonna get him. But expect most of those minutes to be eaten up by Wiggins. I'm not quite sure how they're going to plan to defend Steph because Marcus Smart, he's having some issues injury-wise, and if he's going to have to chase Steph around, that's not going to be good for him. You're going to wear him down. And if you got to put Tatum or Brown on him, they're going to wear down. Like, they're going to have to defend Steph by committee. Same thing with Clay, but Clay to a lesser extent because Clay hasn't been Clay. Pool, we'll see what happens with Pool. The Golden State series is going to come down to Wiggins and Draymond Green's effectiveness. I think Steph is going to, two things are going to happen with Steph. Steph is either going to be Steph or Steph is going to struggle. And it's going to depend on the other guys. But I don't care so much about Clay and Poole. It's Wiggins and Draymond are going to determine if, if the uh, Warriors win that series. Basically, if Draymond and Wiggins have a great series, they win. If not, they lose. But I hope the Bulls are paying attention. That iso ball shit ain't going to work. That 1A, 1B shit ain't going to work. You need to you need to say, okay, this is the Mars team or this is Zach's team. And the offense is going to run through them. And everybody's going to follow the line. And everybody's going to play off them. And we're going to be defense first. And we're going to be offense second. You also need depth. They need to get rid of these one-dimensional guys that do the same thing. Javante, Derrick Jones, Troy Brown Jr., you know, keep maybe one of them. Matt Thomas, get rid of these guys that only do one thing and go get some solid depth. Go get some solid wing depth. And play ball. Because this shit from last year ain't going to cut it. You need team ball. No man is an island. And you cannot have Booch and DeMar out there not committed on the defensive end. If you're going to do that, trade one of them. Trade one of them. Because you cannot win when all of your guys are not committed on defense. The teams that lost had gaps on defense. Or they didn't have depth. Also, you need to get committed to rebounding. Rebounding is very important for these playoffs. Go look at the rebounds. Go look at them. Defense, rebounding, shooting. I've been saying this from jump. Defense, rebounding, shooting. And it comes up every fucking time. Defense, rebounding, shooting. And no small guards. Kyle Lowry, bye-bye. Jalen Brunson, bye-bye. You have the playoffs. Everything I said, people, it's there. It's, it's, it's literally right in front of your face.
I can't wait to see this series though. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. This is this is gonna be a beautiful game of basketball to watch. And Jason Tatum has a chance to step into that realm of being one of the God tier players if he could if he could be the God. He has to become the God Slayer. And he's been slaying them all playoffs. KD, Giannis, if he gets if he gets stuff, he's top six. He's top six. If Steph wins, he's getting finals MVP. And you got to put him top 10 all time. There's a lot on the line for these finals. And for the all season. And I can't wait. I hope y'all have a good day. Hope y'all enjoy the video. Peace.